Alright, so good morning everyone. I want you to picture this. You just finished a long day of school or work, and afterwards, because you're an active person, you decide to go to the gym or some sort of sports activity. And so afterwards, you go home, you feel exhausted, you're hungry, and you feel hot. So what do you do? You open the fridge and you see a nice, delicious tub of ice cream. It's a favorite flavor, and it feels refreshing if you eat it. Like, here's the catch. You won't meet your nutritional goals if you eat it. That's where our company, Porto Lessa, comes in. Our company provides lime-flavored poking and fused ice cream, so our customers could enjoy their favorite delicious frozen treats without having to give up their, or without having to give up their nutritional goals. So this is our team. My name is Joshua Felipe. I am the CEO. I am Ifa Ramirez, and I am the CMO. I'm Edwin. I am the CTO. I'm Benicia. I'm CFO. I'm Jacqueline, and I'm the secretary. And we are Porto Lessa. We noticed that there's not a lot of cold and delicious protein desserts, so we decided that we will make pro healthier desserts such as ice cream with easy protein supplementation for an improved well-being. So for our customer demographic, this is Sergio. He's a 30-year-old Hispanic male that works as an accountant with his friends. Sergio and his friends love to maintain the physique that they have, so they like being consistent with staying active, going to the gym, and what something they do a lot is they like to work out all together and they like taking protein based supplements. For our customer demographic, the age range that we chose was 15 to 35 because those are the primary ages that like to attend the gym, that stay more active and are more consistent, are more consistent with trying to maintain the physique that they have. And for our advertisement, we wanted to advertise a lot on Instagram and TikTok since that's where our primary uh, group, the people that we want to market would be at, which would be our Latin Hispanic group. So following on to our competition, so two of our competitors, Halo Top and Enlightened, they are just low calorie, low sugar ice cream compared to us, which we are low sugar with protein infused with it. What will make us different is that Fortaleza will be one of the only companies in the market that provide protein infused ice cream with unique flavors such as Hispanic flavors and will provide low sugar compared to our other competitors. Alright, and so for our customer relations, because we are targeting a somewhat younger audience with young adults, we are going to mostly be focusing on social media such as TikTok, Instagram, and Snapchat. And so with this, we're also going to or we're going to send our customers to our website, and we are planning on hosting events with celebrities and attending other events such as Muscle Beach, where there's a lot of fitness influencers and other active people. And now moving on to our ad campaign. For our ad campaign, this is our timeline of how our ad would look. As you guys can see in the beginning, we, it would be stating the problem, and then after that it would be the, showing the product that we will, will have to provide to solve this problem, and then it will be our, the benefits so our watchers can see why they should buy our product and why we're better than other ice cream protein based supplements. And last but not least, it will take us to our call to action where our logan and our slogan, slogan will show. And are you tired of having the urge to eat your favorite dessert, but you can't because it does not have any nutritional value in it? Well, not anymore. Introducing our new Fortaleza, or Chata Blessed. With our nice, rich horchata flavor added with 40 grams of protein per bowl. Taste the difference with our delicious blend of flavor and nutrition. Fortaleza, gain strength in every scoop. As shown here, this is how our packaging would look like. This flavor is horchata and our product name would be horchata blast. It contains the ingredients and the grams of protein it has in it. So after Clicking on the ad, you'll be introduced to our landing page where it has a brief description of our business and it asks me for your zip code to see if we are available in your area. After entering your zip code as seen on in the video, it will take you to a sorry page for not being available in your area yet. And after that, you'll have to fill in your name and email so we are able to notify you once we are available in your area. After filling out this form, you will be taken to Thank you page where you'll be provided with a promo code or a coupon code so you can have a percentage off of our product once they, once we launch. All right, so moving into our ad campaign timeline. So after our initial launch, we're mostly going to be collecting data about our demographics and where our 
or where it has the most interest in our product. And so from there, we're going to take the feedback and go ahead the new information and then critique our product if we need to and then focus on what locations are, we are most popular. And then after that, we'll plan on doing a small product launch and having a secondary ad campaign to gather more data and then improve our product further. And so definitions of success. So after the ad campaign, we want to make sure we know our demographics. So this could either be a change or we'll be confirming our demographics as land community or weightlifters. And so after that, we're going to find out if people are really are interested. And so we'll find out about the amount of clicks, likes, and how many people fill out the form. And finally, we'll start to sell in local stores by the end of that campaign. And so this will be the local small supermarkets or maybe like the local gas stations. And finally, by the end of year two, we're planning on trying to sell outside of Fresno. Moving into our market sizing, uh, for the United States, our total addressable market, we have a market of 13 million people. And with that, we have possible units to sell of 328 million, and we have a potential revenue of $3 billion. Moving into our California, which is our serviceable addressable market, we have 1.6 million people in our market with units of 39 million and a potential revenue of 393 million. And with that, with the Fresno area, uh, we have a potential revenue of 1.2 million, and our conversion rate is 3.18%. So our costs. So for shop costs, uh, it's in $69,000 range, and with that, it's mainly our development, which is like uh, marketing, uh, utilities, and testing our product. And with that, our SG&A year one, uh, we have $110,000 with that, and that's mainly goes to all of our salaries. And for our cost of goods, uh, it costs six dollars to make our make a pint of ice cream, and with that, it's mainly due to our labor and our source of protein, which is whey. And with that, we're selling our pints for ten dollars. So our key metrics. So by the end of our first year, we want to make five hundred thousand dollars annually, and we also want to sell forty thousand dollars annually. And we want to have a customer retention rate of 70%. And with that, our, by the end of our first year for our social media, we want to, make 10, we want to have 10,000 followers on our pages with 500 likes per post. And for our website, we want to have 5,000 uh, clicks annually of, of customers coming back. And for our customer scores, we want to have surveys when they sign up for us to see our satisfaction and see if customers like us. We want, we want to have a 4.5 out of 10 on that. And finally, for our promotional, during our promotional sales and deals and stuff, we want to have a 20% increase in sales. Okay. So this is our current profit projections. So this is after all expenses. So by year one, we're planning on making around $20,000 in profit. Year two, we're going to plan on making around 77000 And as we grow, we're planning on making $170,000 by year three. And with these profits, we plan on reinvesting in the business and growing it further. So our current assumptions is our sales projections. So we can't fully predict our sales until we actually start selling on the market. And so those are subject to change as we go on and start selling. We're also assuming our demographics and that people are, are actually will be interested in protein-infused ice cream. And furthermore, we're also assuming that People will be interested in Latin or Latin inspired ice cream flavors because there's not many on the market right now. And also we're assuming our growth rates as a company. So indulge your poor Calessa protein ice cream and enjoy strength in every scoop. Thank you. Let's start off with a couple comments, questions. And I'm not prepared to give my full response to your pitch, but I did want to ask, or have you been introduced to an industry partner at Tino that is one of the owners of Ampersand Ice Cream? Yes, we have. We met with them on the side and been counseled and mentored at all by We have talked to them a bit. We, we are working on a current mentorship, but we've both been really busy lately. That's what I mean. Um, so the reason I ask that is because whenever you have access to somebody that's gone before you in a similar approach, a similar offer, a similar product, it's, it's, it can take so many of the facts and figures that you're trying to put together that are married based on other things available. But you can just, I can literally tell you our first year we did this. So, and you're saying by year three you want to pull in 170,000 in revenue. My first concern is 
170,000 revenue will not be by people employed. And three years from now, you're all out of high school and you're in a business. This is the way we as judges are looking at this that you want to be an entrepreneur high school and you want to start a business as soon as you get out of high school. So, my first recommendation is that, that there, you know, your whole presentation is fine, it's fantastic, but the reality of success is going to need some work and some drilling down into it. And if you're too busy to get to that now, <clears throat> You, you need to find some time, and I would think that he would be available. You can ask him, what did you do in year one? How did you get the dollar to that? What did you do in year two? Were you at 170 by year three? Were you guys working out of your garage? Were you, how were you doing it? You know, That's all I have for, for starters. I'm going to think through the rest of it. I'll come back and we'll have some other good later. I've got a few, if you don't mind. First of all, I'll start a great presentation. I uh, really liked the flow. And I really like the, uh, the slogan as well, strengthen every scoop. I think that's really interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the things I'd ask you about, and I know I appreciate because this is a project, and I, I think Josh was speaking to this as well. One of the things you need to be thinking about if you're going to pursue this afterwards is the realities of how to run this business. Uh, the distribution is going to be tricky because it's a perishable product. Yeah. Is this the actual prototype? Yeah, so that ice cream has 20 grams of protein in every. It's uh, delicious. I love it. The flavor is, is phenomenal. And I think that's actually an interesting part as well. Are you, are you planning? Have you thought about other flavors? This is pork chopping? Yeah, so that so we made prototype flavors a little bit earlier back in the year, mm -hmm. like maybe like a, about a month or two ago. And so with that our we had like a coconut flavor and we also had like a chocolate flavor. And so the pork chopping one was the best received. And mm -hmm. so that's what I decided to bring today. Yeah, I mean, it's really good. I, I like, and that's one of the most important things. You know, a lot of people can come up here and pitch a food or beverage product, but ultimately it's how does it taste? And you'd be amazed the number of products that actually do make it to market that don't taste good. Uh, I really like this. That is something, you know, when you're marketing, and, and I don't know, I, I see really kind of two potential markets here. I know you're targeting lactose-based flavors. I think that in and of itself is kind of a unique market for ice cream specifically, but you're also targeting the protein market as well, which is its own really interesting market. So maybe there's an opportunity here to, to focus on both sort of simultaneously. The idea, the value proposition that you can have a dessert that isn't as bad for you as a conventional dessert is very appealing. And that's appealing to a variety of people. And so whether you're a weightlifter or you're a working father or you're a stay-at-home mom, whatever, the idea that ice cream could be good for me is really appealing. So anyway, I would encourage you to think maybe there is a market there where you can also delve into the nutritional properties of the dessert and play that up just a little bit more, mm -hmm. and, or vice versa, you know, the, the Latin flavors, that's a really unique element as well. Because I don't think there are a lot of other ice cream companies that kind of delve into just making flavors that are more exotic, if you will. So anyway, something to think about. Uh, is it nutritional? I know we've talked about this a lot, but that's kind of hinges on this too. Is it really, yes, it has protein in it, and a lot of protein, but is it better than Nutritionally speaking, a conventional scoop of ice cream. That is something we are also still currently working on. So whey does have a few other nutrients that does make the ice cream a little bit more nutritional, but we want to make it more of a significant factor. Okay. So that okay. is something we're working on. And the low sugar is also something that's being developed because we can't eliminate sugar completely because some of the other ingredients still have it. But we can still reduce like the added sugar and replace it with say like mofu or other sweeteners that makes that will lower the color of intake, so it's more appealing. Okay, and that would be something I focus on too, because of course the, the value prop is it's healthy or healthier than the alternative, but at some point you're really going to have to quantify how much better is it than the alternative. Yeah. Is it just ice cream with protein in it, or is it ice cream that is actually better for you than a conventional scoop of ice cream? Yeah. Uh, oh, and then did I see, you had a sales price on there, I know it can be difficult to go back to your slides. Uh, your, your sales price per unit, yeah, 10, what size is that? Is that for a pint? Is that for oh, it is for a pint. Okay. Yeah. I candidly, I would sell it for more. I mean, if it if it's good and it's nutritious, we can kind of talk about that. Yeah, but I think ten dollars is, is inexpensive. Um, I know, and, and part of this will be dictated on your volume. But like the Gibson store that we have on campus at Fresno State, uh, a pint of ice cream there is like eight nine dollars, and it's there's nothing exotic about it. It just happens to be the scale at which they decided to price the product. So uh, if you can. Really provide something unique and different. I think 10 may be too low. Maybe we're 12, maybe we're 15. Obviously, the marketing's going to have to play into that, but I think there's an opportunity there because of the unique space you're trying to fill and be charging a little bit higher price points. Anyway, great presentation overall. I really like it. Thank you. 
I'll go. <laughs> first of all, I thought you guys did an excellent job for the first team. You set a bar. Um, I've got to see a preview of everyone's presentation, or mostly everyone. And fantastic job from the presentation, from the presentation standpoint. You have stage presence. Um, the only thing is maybe a little louder, so a little bit, but other than that, I thought it was excellent. Um, some other things. You came up to me and you gave me some ice cream. You said, hey, there's, there's sugar in this. I have type 1 diabetes, so I've already talked in, I've already talked to this team about using monk fruit and other things, and Jeff, uh, who owns Ampersand, I think he can give you a lot of insight, tons of insight of how much that, since we're on the slide, of the cause. Uh, I agree with Eric. Uh, I think you could charge one. I, I think you could charge possibly $12 or $15. Um, because, like you said, there's there's ice cream out there, and talk to Jeff about this, because he sells by the scoop. He can tell you, like, yeah, I can sell, you could probably sell this for more, maybe not. Maybe that is your is $10. So, I'm um, also agreeing with Josh, you need to really work closely with Jeff at the Okay. This is his market thing. He knows everything about ice cream and how to sell it. Um, other things. Uh, let's go back to, can we go back to slice Okay. For, for the most part, I, I think, you know, Projections, like you said, you, you don't know yet until you really start selling, but I think distribution, too, is going to be one of the issues you're going to run into, which Jeff could possibly help you out with. Um, but for the idea, I think you're tapping into a market, like a span market, that um, they're dealing with a crisis right now, which is obesity. Um, they are up there with uh, the highest rate of obesity. And if you could get, make an ice cream that's with five brands, because I talked to so many nutritionists, if you could make five grams per serving or in that range of nutrition or less, for diabetics, that's good. So anything between the range of about five to seven grams of sugar, below that, you're, you're in a sweet spot. So do you know how much sugar is in this? It's probably like um, half a cup for the whole pint. Okay. Um, so like I said, we should explore, and I'd be happy to help you with this, uh, different natural additives like sativa or sativa, those all yeah. right? Um, and monk fruit and other things are offered that are actually healthier than artificial sweeteners mm -hmm. that come naturally from the leaf. Uh, but for the most part, I thought you guys did a great job. Uh, your presentation, I was smiling because you used ice cream in a lot of the, the graphs, and I thought that was a good touch. It really made me smile in the morning, and I was not expecting that. So, hey, great job. Thank you guys. Did. I wanted to add on, I thought about sugars, but also it takes a lot of salt in your ice cream. So my advice to you is that you have more people taste your ice cream before you walk it out. And there are health issues out there, like such as um, hyperpressure with the sea salt and not another thing. Um, um, ingredients to put in ice cream because there's already enough others like um, creamy, as you mentioned, the sugar. So um, I'm not sure how much salt you have here, but I do not like the taste, but I can still taste the salt. Um, there's, there's not a lot of salt in it, no, it's like around like a like around like an eighth of a teaspoon. Mm -hmm. It might be the cinnamon, there would be a lot of cinnamon in it and have a similar texture. And also, you don't mention like cost for properties and powers because. We do need powers and properties to run the business, so maybe that helps control the cost as well. So we um, the project to be on the third, the first year at uh, forty thousand. That might, um, you know, might be a challenge for the business. Well, something we're looking into, and so this was from feedback from the owner of Ampersand, was that having an ice cream production facility is very expensive in California. There's a lot of restrictions and codes that you have to follow, and so to build a new produced ice cream costs a lot of money. And so what we're looking towards, at least when we first start, is to outsource it to another company that already produces like recipes and ice creams, and we could send them the recipe and produce it that way. So it'll be a little bit cheaper in the beginning, but then we wouldn't have to be buying the full brick and mortar location to produce it. But then later on, as we would go, we would want to look at the buying our own location because it would be cheaper in the order. 
I'd like to commend you guys on the presentation as a whole. Uh, visually, it's very neat. Um, I like how everything was structured as well. Coming from the multimedia aspect that your guys have had, I've experienced in the past where products that claim to have some kind of health beneficiary or anything like that, it leaves a little bit of skepticism to the consumer when they're consuming something that is projected to be healthy for them without any kind of visual back because the ad is what meets the consumer back for any of the market. Like that. Mm -hmm. I would probably just recommend with your ad, um, the short video you guys played, maybe possibly asking adding some of the nutritional value in that rather than just here's the guy, he's working out slow, now he's working out fast. Maybe a little misleading mm -hmm. to the consumer. I understand it's probably within the limitations of the project, but um, if you are choosing to pursue this as an actual venture once you guys are all done with your stay at high school, I'd really look into um, taking some of the aspects to use for the visual of and just how to watch character you guys this presentation and implementing that into your visual brand. Um, other than that, you guys are very well structured. Um, it was a performative presentation and very well organized. So I can end it for that. Thank you. Oh, I have a, I'll close this off. I'm a skeptic of everything. So when I see a plan, I'd like to see that the, um, like what you guys have. Would you just be, I'm going to piggyback on calling it a lot of your nutritional fats. I, you know, on an average versus what you guys have. You know, the, the working out one, I like it, more protein. But then, you know, what difference would it make if someone just could? Protein powder into their ice cream. I don't know what the numbers are. It's sort of like how they're intake or how much fat, how much you have to sugar and whatnot. But I think if you guys added that, it'd be pretty good. Mm -hmm. yeah. But yeah, that's about it. I like, you know, I just want to be convinced. I want to be converted. Tell me why a regular ice cream or your ice cream is way better than the regular. Mm -hmm. Just show me some numbers of back that up. Okay. Okay. I'm going to come back to you. You get to the first one out of the gate this morning. It's always hard to be the first one. Um, I, I, I want to make this statement not just for you, but for the room, for the others. This is an entrepreneurial high school. This should not be looked at as a standalone project that you're being judged on the project. We have to judge the efficacy of the business if it's an entrepreneurial high school, it's an entrepreneurial endeavor. <clears throat> I realize not everybody is going to launch and go and do these things, but there's some real serious challenges here for this to be a successful business in my opinion. One is, if Jeff at Ampersand is too sharp, he would eat you. you have no protection for any of your recipes. You can meet with him, he can mentor you, and Three months after you graduate high school, he didn't help you start, but takes every one of your recipes and puts them in. I'm just saying, yeah. Jeff's not here to defend himself. I'm not saying that he's unscrupulous or he's unethical. I'm just saying that you don't have a way to protect your product if you did. So, so there's a couple ways to succeed when you do something that's unique, but you can't protect it with patenting or, or trademarking. You come out with something that's so different, so unique, so good, and you move so fast with it, that the competitors can't catch up. Mm -hmm. But what Ampersand's already got prime real estate. A new one I just saw on Shepherd and Willow, he's over. You know, prime real estate, all he needs to do is have flavor. You've got to do everything. You have to put the whole thing together. So my point is I want to encourage you to consider the viability of the business. Find how this is going to be something that's going to succeed. Don't go on the basis of merit of the flavor and the demographic of Latino Hispanic flavors. Tons of people in the Valley love Latino restaurants and Latino flavors. They're not Latino, you know. Yeah. So one of you said that our target demographic is Latino yeah. bodybuilders or, you know, yeah. sheep, conscious people. Um, I looked up Ben and Jerry's annual sales, 936 million. If you could go to your, your screen that says, uh, death of success. Modern demographics. I don't think that's the one. I mean, I can do I can well hold on real fast. So you have these ideas of how you're going to move your product and how you're going to have revenue, all that stuff. Yeah. 
I know who's interested to do that, gather the data. Let's go to the dollars then. On what you, what you were hoping to, okay, yeah. So, Ben and Jerry's, they're, they're not just selling in the United States. I've seen their stuff overseas. And they're doing 936 million, and you got a serviceable market of 1.6 coming out of the gate with the flavor. And your total addressable market is, is lower than them, but you've got a margin, a portion of it. And these guys have been in business for four decades, I would bet. Four decades. Banging it out, carving it out, trying to make it work. I want, every time I help with you guys, I want to see you come away inspired, encouraged, yeah. and I don't want to propose negativity, mm -hmm. but constructive criticism is very important Yeah, you're really wanting to be an entrepreneur and do something. So <coughs> I will put my information on, on this. I would be willing to talk to you guys. I can't say that I can make this a successful business, but I would dive in a little bit. Maybe some more time. It's not the place for that. Mm -hmm. But I'll put it on the back and I'd like to do it so. Yes, that would be really appreciated. Okay. I have one more thing to add. Uh, you, this team, I believe, pivoted, correct? Yes. Yeah, right. So how much time did you have between pivoting and coming up with this idea and this, this model? Mm -hmm. Well, like how much time were you given from the pivot, to when you pivoted to this idea, to coming up with this? <clears throat> well, we pivoted back, like, and fully pivoted, I'd say, in early, early to mid-January. And then, so, we had to figure, we figured things out, uh -huh. and, like, I think find the kind of specific niche that we wanted to go into. So we developed a whole presentation in probably like, I'd say most of our business probably developed in around the 10 months or so, maybe a little bit longer, months and a half. And, you know, that's, that to me shows that you, you worked pretty hard in 60 years. And for what you came up with, and I understand, and I'm, I'm, Josh is giving you feedback that he's being honest, which yeah. is great. I also saw the back end of what you guys did and what you came up with in such a short period of time where I see other teams sit around for three months and they finish last minute and they put everything together. I see that happen too. So what he's trying to do is he's like, it's a good idea, but you have a lot of things that yeah. you have to see. Yeah. I, I agree. There's a lot of competition out there. Uh, you have to get the ground running, there's no protections. As you know, I was a, the CFO for the Public Joy Coffee House. All the ingredients that we came up with, yeah, people could easily copy. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if they're dealing with that now, but um, he's right. There's no, there's, there's no protection of, of, of protecting a recipe. Yeah. Um, but for the amount of time you had, <clears throat> I thought it was good. In all honesty. So, good job. Thank you. Thank you. You guys?